this is Mrs. Murdoch, and this is part one of the Osmosis and Diffusion Lab that is part of your AP lab list. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to demonstrate a qualitative study where, uh, where we're going to analyze substances that are moving in and out of something called dialysis tubing. Now dialysis tubing doesn't look like much. It looks like a flat piece of plastic. It doesn't look like much of anything at all. See that? But if you soak it for a while, and I've soaked this for a while, then what you do is you kind of swish it back and forth with your fingers and you find that, oh, it is hollow. It's a hollow tube. And in fact, dialysis tubing is, is not just made for AP Biology uh, students to, to play with, with diffusion. It's actually a real, uh, a real substance that is manufactured to use in dialysis machines. So you may know that dialysis is a process that people sometimes need if their kidneys are not functioning properly. So um, if, if, uh, if a person's kidneys aren't working properly, what, what that means is that they're not able to filter out the toxins from their blood and then those toxins and wastes build up in the blood and that can make you very, very sick. So if you have a damaged kidney for any reason, like from diabetes sometimes or cancer or maybe you had an accident, you lost a kidney, um, you need to go and, and have dialysis done so that you can art have somebody artificially take the toxins out of your blood. And this is something that you have to continuously go do. Some people need to, need to do it every week, sometimes more often. Uh, but it is a lifesaver for people with damaged kidneys. So what happens is you go to a clinic and you sit down in a chair and they take the blood out of your body um, and filter it through a machine that has tubing in it and it goes right through the tubing. And tubing is a polymer that has tiny little holes in it. The holes aren't big enough so that a person's red blood cells could come out. The red blood cells won't be removed. We certainly wouldn't want to remove a person's cells from their blood. But the chemicals, some of the chemicals, the toxic chemicals, can be drawn out. And it becomes a diffusion problem because the water surrounding the bag, as the blood is going through it, is less concentrated in toxins than the inside of the bag. So that manipulates the flow of waste to come out of the person's blood so that the blood that comes out of the machine is clean and is put back into the person. And that's what dialysis really is. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to use this tubing to make an artificial cell with some glucose and starch put inside it. So as you can see, the glucose and starch solution that I've made, it's kind of opaque and white. Um, if you remember your carbohydrates, we just learned about this. Uh, try to remember in your mind what the molecular structure of glucose versus a starch is in terms of its size and its structure, because that will be important here. And we're gonna put it inside here, and then we're going to immerse it in a solution with some chemical indicators to help us decide, to help us uh, to, to see if either one of those molecules, the glucose and the starch, are able to move out into the surrounding solution. So first of all, I'm gonna make the chamber so you can see how this is done. So you knot one end of it, and believe me, I have learned the hard way to never try to pour the solution in the top before you have firmly knotted the bottom. So then you knot the bottom, so now you have that tied off, and then you take a funnel, Plastic funnel. This is always difficult for me getting it in here. Um, and you and you ease it into the opening at the top, which when it starts to dry, it kind of there we go. Okay, so now it's in there. Once again, you don't want to pour anything if the funnel is not on the inside. <laughs> here is my glucose starch solution that I'm going to pour inside. I'm not really going to worry about measuring it because this is a qualitative study and not a quantitative one. So now we've got some glucose and starch on the inside and it is white. So you may want to mark down somewhere what the initial color of the solution is. It's opaque. And I'm going to knot it off very firmly there. Okay, now before I do anything else, I'm gonna show you, this is the solution I'm going to place, place it into, you know? So kind of like there's two solutions here. There's one inside the bag that has the glucose and starch inside it and it looks white. And then there, this will be outside the bag because I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to put some iodine in this water. <laughs> it's clogged again. <laughs> okay, it worked before. It worked before. Oh, hold on just a second. Just hold on.
hold on, keep filming, keep filming, we're gonna get it. There. So we're gonna drop this in here. I'm just gonna put a quantity of very stubborn iodine into this beaker. Things always work when you're not filming. There we go. All right, and again, I'm not too worried about measuring because I am, this is qualitative. Okay, so let's talk about iodine. You see now the, the solution is kind of clear orange. There is no glucose or starch in here, okay? So clear orange with no glucose and starch. Opaque with nothing but glucose and starch, but there's no iodine in this bag. This goes in here. You might already be predicting in your mind what's gonna happen over time, but before we do that, let me show you what, what you might see if the iodine comes in contact with the starch. So this is starch. I'm going to take just a little bit, I don't need, oops, very much of starch, and I'm gonna put it into a test tube. It just has water in it. And then we're gonna try this iodine again, and what happens? Okay, so when iodine comes in contact with starch, you can see that it turns black, very, very dark color. Now, when it's just in contact with water without starch, let's get in there. It doesn't turn black. That is very different color than this. This is a positive test for starch. The starch is definitely there, and the iodine is the indicator chemical that indicates that it is there. This is a negative test for starch, which just like with the water in the beaker is just more of a golden clear color. Okay, so what you should be thinking in your mind is predicting if the starch is able to move out of the bag, if the pores of the bag will allow it, what will the outside of the water turn to? So think about that for a minute. Okay, so that's one question here, and it's, pur it's purely qualitative, right? We're not measuring anything. The other question is, there's also glucose inside that bag. Will the glucose be small enough to fit through the pores and come out into the beaker water? So we're wondering about that. Iodine does not test for glucose. There is a, a glucose test that, that we have here in the classroom. It's called Benedict solution. Look at the pretty blue. See that, isn't that nice? So Benedict solution will indicate if glucose is present. Here's some glucose. Let me show you what that will look like if the glucose is there. So if I put some glucose into this test tube, And, and I need to add quite a bit of Benedict's, actually, for it to work. Okay. Yes, that should do it, okay. Now, this is an indicator that does not work on to indicate the glucose until you heat it. So if I were to heat it, it will change color. So I'm gonna take it over here and I have a hot water bath going and I don't like the way that's settled down there. There, I can see the kernels, the grains going up into the water. I think that really should be enough. Okay. It will take some time for it to happen, but it will happen, and it might take a minute. In the meantime, come on back over here, and just like Julia Child used to do in the 70s, I'm sorry, that's, that was what I grew up with, we have uh, something that has been sitting for quite a while. This uh, I did this morning much earlier and it's been sitting and look what happened to it. There is definitely a difference when this beaker, this situation has been allowed to sit over time. Something is going on. We have some color changes. So let's see what's going on. Okay, first of all, the beaker water is much clearer. Do you notice that? And the beaker water does not seem to have turned black. So what would that indicate? And that is your question to answer. Okay, did the starch move, in other words? Did the starch move into the beaker water? It's clear here. It started orange and now it's clear. So answer that for yourself. Now the second question is, is there evidence inside the bag that the starch is there? Or that, the, or that there is a reaction between iodine and starch in the bag. What do you think? 
So did the iodine move into the bag and find the starch? Answer that, okay? So the first question was, did the starch move out? The second question was, did the iodine move in? Okay, those two questions. I'm not gonna tell you the answer. All right, so now the th last question is, did, oh, and let's go over to this because this is gorgeous. This is a positive glucose test. <laughs> there is definitely glucose in that water. And if you add Benedict's and then you let it sit in a hot water bath, that is a pos positive reaction for glucose. So that's, that's what we want to do with the beaker water because our final question is, did, did the glucose that was inside this bag, remember we put glucose inside the bag, move into the beaker water? Has it had enough time to concentrate enough for us to be able to measure it? That's Mrs. Murat's other question. So we're going to. We've got another test tube out here. Okay. So this is a clean test tube, and I'm going to pour some of the beaker water in here and test it to see if the glucose is there. Yeah. So there's the solution. Here's the Benedict's to test for glucose. Let's put a lot in there, just like we did before. Three there, okay. And let's put it over in the heat and see if it does something similar to what that first test tube did. And it might take a little time and the glucose in that beaker water might be a little bit more dilute than that concentrated stuff that I put in this one. So we're gonna let that sit for a minute. Okay. All right, and if we go back to this, can you start to see changes happening in there? Looks like there's some color change in the bag starting to happen. So if that continues, then it will eventually get to look like this. So that iodine seems to be going somewhere. And that color looks a bit like this color, yes? <laughs> Which is the positive test for iodine, right? Okay, um, it might take, hmm. I'm starting to see some positivity there. So orange is the most dramatic color for the positive change, but sometimes it only goes to green, which is different from blue, and it makes a precipitate. If you, those of you who know your chemistry, you know what a precipitate is. So in this one, we've got an orange precipitate. In this one, I'm starting to see green, which is a positive test for glucose. And I will pull it out in just a second so you can see that it definitely looks different than just, like for example, if I just had only ordinary water, right? Let me just set up a really quick control here. If I just had ordinary water and I put the same amount of Benedict's into it and then heated it, you would find that you'd get no color change beyond the blue at all. And look at that. There we go. That is a positive test for glucose. Even though it doesn't look as dramatic as the glucose that where I, what I, I put a ton of glucose into that bright orange one. And there was only maybe less glucose in the beaker water because there was more water and just whatever was diffusing. Okay, so then that question is, if that question remains, is the glucose is the glucose a small enough molecule to move from the pores in this bag into this beaker water, which we just tested using Benedict's solution, right? So there were your three, there were your three questions. Did the, did the starch move? Did the iodine move? And did the glucose move? And you should have enough data from what I've collected here to answer those three questions. So then, um, the last question is, do you think that osmosis is possible? And osmosis, you remember, is diffusion of water. So in all of these situations, is it also possible, and this is maybe, we're not trying to measure this here, but is it possible that the bags might have gained or lost some water? That if I leave this in here for long enough, do you kind of notice that this bag looks a little bit more full than this one? 
And the only way that would happen is, um, is if water moved into it. So does it make sense that the water would have moved from the beaker into the bag? Is this more concentrated than the water with the iodine in it? And would that have drawn the water in? Okay. And that is my presentation on the qualitative movement of, of particles through a dialysis bag.